Here's the deal team, I have been sent a special custom made mead from the other side of the world and my job, my challenge is to specially craft a spirit to pair with that mead to make cocktails. How's it going Chasers? I hope you're having a kick ass week. I'm Jesse, this is Still It and when Garrett from Man Made Mead first reached out and uh, asked if he could send me a mead and then laid down the gauntlet for this challenge to see if I could make something specifically to pair with it, I said, hell yes, and here we are. Fun. Thanks, man. Uh, I'm going to get into tasting that mead in just a second and then, of course, making something to pair with it. Uh, but first, here's a little clip from Garrett showing how he made the mead. Uh, if you're into mead and you want to know more about it, you should totally check out his YouTube channel. I'll put details for that down below. It's time to make some mead. We're making one of the easiest meads to make, a traditional. This mead only features honey, water, and yeast, and we're using lemon blossom honey in this circumstance. We're planning on using wine yeast for this mead, but you're welcome to use ale yeast as well. Once you have your honey, water, and yeast, you want to start mixing that together. The honey and water mixture is called must. Once we add our yeast, it should start fermenting pretty soon. You can figure out your alcohol by volume by taking a gravity reading with a hydrometer. Save that original gravity reading number, which is 1.070 in this case, and write it down. Honey is very low in nitrogen and complex micronutrients that the yeast need to thrive, so we're gonna add some Fermate O, which is an organic yeast nutrient to this brew at the 24 hour mark. This will ensure that the yeast ferment in a healthy manner all the way through fermentation. Fermentation will take roughly about two to three weeks, You'll know your mead's done fermenting by taking another gravity reading or noticing it starts to clear up some. We rack it into a new container and stabilize it with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. The combination of these two halt any future fermentation, allowing us to back sweeten with a fermentable sugar. We add one pound of lemon blossom honey to back sweeten and some oak flavor. I'm using the oak maturation sticks from Chase the Craft. I threw one in and left it in for about two weeks. Once two weeks had gone by, I went ahead and used my auto siphon tubing and bottling wand to bottle some of this mead. We flew over to New Zealand for a quick trip and hand delivered the bottles. It's time to see if Jesse likes it. Here we are team, and I think the obvious first thing to do is to just taste this. I need something to get the bottle cap open with. Uh, maturation stick, <laughs> will that work? It works. <laughs> uh, taste it and see what I'm getting in terms of inspiration. Cheers, let's have a sniff. Dang, dude. Garrett, my man, you know what you're doing, don't you? <laughs> that is delicious. Often, mead finishes sweet when it's not quite done Wonderfully, of course there's, you know, there's poetic expression for a sweeter mead. This is more what I prefer. This is quite dry. Up until halfway through, like right before you swallow, it almost just feels like you're drinking a really nice white wine. You swallow, and then all of the honey characteristics come out afterwards. Man, yeah, I'm really into this. And all of my preconceived notions of what I thought potentially I was going to do in, in terms of a spirit to pair with this just went out the window. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm going to pause the camera and uh, have a think about this for a little while <laughs> and get back to you. So I've been thinking and contemplating this mead for a while now and trying to decide what to pair it with, how to bring out the flavors or um, harmonize with the flavors, I guess you'd call it. And there's a really interesting note in this mead. Uh, Mr. Man-Made Mead, check me, tell me if I'm full of it here, but it's similar to lemon. It is a lemon blossom mead. I'm guessing that's where it comes from. It doesn't taste like lemon juice, it doesn't taste like lemon aid. Uh, kind of like a candied lemon wedge is what I would call it. And it pushes towards orange as well. It, it sits amazingly with this slightly honeycomb kind of honey presence in here and the fermentation character. And this is gonna sound terrible for a second, but it's almost, it almost reminds me of Brett, like a sour beer. It's not sour at all. I think the, the fermentation is clean and perfect, but it has that kind of complexity. And I had initially thought of pairing the mead, before I'd even opened it, with something like a botanical rum, 
or a cardamom and baking spice kind of gin, something big and bold to go up with the honey and like bring out the honey sweet. That, it's not what this is. This is subtle. It's dainty and delicate and it's pretty. So I need to make something pretty to go with it to not overpower it. That's my plan. I am still gonna make a gin, but I think I'm gonna make it slightly fruity and herbal. I might be crazy, but I think this will work. Let's get stuck in. So, like always when it comes to gin, uh, I'm starting in my mind at my base gin, Jesse's base gin, I guess we'll call it. Uh, 700 mils of vodka. I'm using the potato vodka. Still what I got laying around. I don't think it's gonna make a big difference in this kind of recipe. You could even do it with store-bought vodka if you wanted to. Next up, uh, citrus. I am going with these horribly ugly absolutely delicious lemons that grow in our backyard. And we're gonna go with, I'm thinking about six grams of this. I don't wanna make it too lemony, uh, but it makes sense. You know, it's a, it's a lemon blossom uh, mead, right? So lemon's gonna be the uh, citrus of choice here. That is 6.66 grams of lemon peel. I'm not trying to say anything, that's literally what it was. <laughs> Next up, coriander seeds. I'm gonna back off just a little bit with the coriander seeds. We're gonna go six grams today. Um, I do want this to be citrusy, uh, and the coriander will help with that, but I'm, I'm backing off a little bit. My base gin is, is quite intense. Bold would be the right word for a gin, I think. Uh, so I'm gonna back off to six grams. Still can't find my pestle and mortar. So we're gonna do the baggy trick with those. I thought I brought the mallet out, but I didn't. So, you know what? Let's use a maturation stick for this as well. Cracked open, but not pulverized, is how I like my coriander. And the root of choice today is going to be uh, angelica root. We're going in with one gram today, I think. We need the star of the show, Juniper. Uh, I'm gonna go with 25 grams, but I am not gonna crush it today. Uh, in my experience, crushing the Juniper tends to head a little bit more towards the kind of Christmas tree, uh, pine sap end of things. Leaving them whole tends to push it slightly towards uh, the more berryish characteristics of Juniper. Uh, take that with a grain of salt, it's my experience. If you've experienced the same, let me know. If you think I'm an idiot, let me know that also. So you can go in. Now we come to the stuff that is gonna be a little bit different. And first of all, we're gonna deal with the slightly fruity side of things. Recently, I distilled hibiscus, just plain hibiscus by itself um, to see what it would taste like. And it was absolutely delicious. It ended up tasting uh, kind of like Ribena. And when I did, just pure hibiscus, I put a lot of hibiscus in here and that would be too much for this. I don't want it, how do I put it? I don't want it to taste like hibiscus. I want to get that slightly black currenty, like berry-like sweetness just kind of peeking through. And uh, our hibiscus plant <laughs> is getting to the end of its uh, season. It's looking a little bit sad, so I hope this still does the job. Uh, this specifically, for those of you that care, is Rose of Sharon hibiscus. Uh, that is three very small flowers, four very small flowers. I mean, guys, I'm shooting from the hip here. If it turns out terrible, I can always, you know, make another batch, but let's go with five small flowers. Uh, now, for the more sort of savory, herby side of things, which in my mind is gonna mix really well with the, uh, the wine fermentation characteristics that are coming through in the mead. Uh, number one, bay leaf. This was actually Erin's idea. She walked past and said, why don't you put bay leaf in it? <laughs> and I thought, sure. Uh, once again, ugly ass bay leaves, but they grow in our backyard. Super fresh, super delicious. One. You know what, let's do two. I'm just giving them a, same as when you cook with them, uh, kind of snap them in half and then give them a little crinkle. Boop, and it goes. And last but not least, thyme. Now, I've never distilled with thyme before. 
Cooking with thyme is tricky because it is absolutely delicious, uh, but there is a very, very fine line between you can barely taste thyme and there's way too much thyme because it's really, it can be quite potent. Um, the inspiration for putting this into a gin came a couple of days ago when I was reading about putting thyme in gin and apparently it comes through a little bit more earthy and almost mint-like. Uh, and if I can get some something that is an earthy minty version of slightly thyme, I think that'll be absolutely perfect in this. So, sorry, my bad. I really should have weighed those before I put them in, but I'm doing small uh, little sprigs like this. I'm leaving the stalks on. Uh, I'm gonna do four of them in total, and that weighs pretty much four grams. Well, if how pretty it is uh, has anything to do with how delicious it is, I think this is gonna be amazing. Uh, so let's get this warmed up. Uh, plug it in. Turn it on. Plug in the head unit to make sure there's actually power going to it. We have fans, so yes, we're warming up. Gonna get this up to about 50 degrees Celsius uh, and let it sit for about two hours. Then we can get on to distillation. All right, all right, we have official drips coming out the top. Let's give it a few more mils to get rid of the rid of the weird botanicaliness up the top. Probably starting to be almost enough. And we're good. Ah! There we go. So, uh, honestly team, this one is intriguing to me. That is three ingredients that I've never put in a gin. Two I have never distilled with at all. I've no idea how this is gonna turn out. So I'm just gonna settle in and uh, take it as it comes, I guess. That right now tastes absolutely delicious though, not gonna lie. Uh, bay leaf and... and hibiscus. All right, team, we are about 200 mils into the run, probably a little slightly under halfway. And the flavor, as expected, has changed. The bay leaf has faded right out. We're starting to get more of the thyme thing now. And like that article that I was reading, I wish I could remember where I found it <laughs> so I could reference it. If I do, I'll put it in the links down there. Um, it's weird, it's like thyme. It is more earthy, almost to the point of being kind of like a root in gin, um, and slightly fresher. Heading towards mint, I don't know if I'd quite call it mint, but it's a very interesting flavor, and I think it's gonna work really well in this. So I'll carry on collecting, dripping away, and I'll catch up with you when it's time to start thinking about shutting this down. So we're near the end of the run now, and I'm gonna switch out. Uh, I think things are fine right now. The ABV hasn't dropped that low. I'm guessing we're still at about, I don't know, 60, 65%. But we're definitely getting near the point where we're gonna call this. The reason I'm switching out is I'm starting to get something that's a little bit vegetal. I think, I think it's the bay leaf and it's just starting to get a little bit too savory. Uh, right now, I think it's fine. I'm just scared if it keeps, keeps like ramping up, it might be a little bit too much in here. Uh, so I'm gonna keep, collect like this for another couple of minutes. Uh, we're real close to just turning off though. If I can get a little bit more in here, why not? I'm actually fine with this. I think it's kind of the transition from the dregs of bay leaf flavor into angelica root. Uh, so I'm just going to do that. Lose a few drips, but I'm fine with that. Yeah, definitely. All right, crisis averted. Well, there was no crisis. I was panicking for no reason. <laughs> all right, it's only been like a minute and a half since I last talked to you. All right, that's all I've collected. And the, um, the bottom's just completely fallen out of all of it. Uh, ABV's starting to really dip. Flavor's totally disappeared. This is about what I was expecting to collect. Maybe a little bit less, but I'm gonna turn this off. We'll get this proof down. Uh, let it rest for a couple of hours, because that's all I've got and I'll come back to you later tonight with some mead and gin cocktails. Uh, and I do believe, Erin, yes. are you gonna help me out tasting cocktails? Maybe. <laughs> she maybe. Yes. She maybe. Yes. Yes. She says yes. She says yes.
Erin's over there packing orders for uh, chasethecraft.com. Well, actually, right now, I think she's on TikTok. But uh, soon she'll be packing orders for chasethecraft.com. Use TikTok. Uh-huh. Liar. Let's get started with our first cocktail. We're going to need 10 to 15 blueberries muddled in the bottom of a shaker. Add ice and one and a half parts of the new gin. We also need one and a half parts of our traditional lemon blossom mead. Half a part freshly squeezed lemon juice, half a part of honey syrup into the shaker, give it a really good shaking, tip it over a glass full of ice and top it up with soda water. Of course, garnish it with hibiscus flowers. We're building the next cocktail directly in a tall glass full of ice. Squeeze a quarter lime over the top and dump it in. Three quarts of a part of our new gin. Three quarts of a part of white cane rum. And two parts of our mead. Top it up with a tasty ginger beer. Give it a little stir and drop a straw in it. For our third cocktail, start by pre-chilling a coupe glass. We're going to need a shaker. In goes the ice. Two parts of our gin. Half a part of lemon juice. Three quarts of a part of honey syrup. One and a half parts of the mead. Honestly, that was more like one and three quarters. Into the shaker. Give it a really good blast. Shaking it up and strain it into the coupe glass. I am going to be garnishing this with some fresh thyme sprigs. Three cocktails. Uh, feel free to attack them at your will. Very fancy. Uh, just be aware that this goes from sweetest to driest. Oh, okay. So if you go yeah. that way, it's probably Look, it's better. tallest to shortest. Oh, yeah, look at that. Did you do that on purpose? Uh, no, I mean, yes. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm going to jump in. I don't know about you. Well, I wanted that one first. I've, I'm going to skip ahead. I have no idea what any of this is, by the way. Well, I'll let you taste them first. <laughs> I don't even know what that mixer is. Enough. Try this. Where is the mixer? I'm not telling. Stop looking. You're not oh. going to work it out from the mixer. Just I was drink. just curious. I can't even put my... Shh, drink. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> well, this one has a sprig of thyme in it. It does, yes. I'm going to go with thyme. This is really nice. That's good, eh? I don't, yeah, I don't even know what's going on there, but it's delicious. Yeah, I it's like lime and thyme. I haven't tried or this Or something one like that. Was it no lime? It tastes citrusy, though. Hmm. I'll start again. I'm on the fence about this one. I think that one's a bit dry, eh? Uh, I think this mead and gin are both, like, drier than average. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more, uh, another ounce of sugar syrup to this one. Hmm. Wow. Absolutely delicious. I could drink that all freaking day long in like a garden bar. I would never put mead and ginger beer together normally. Do people well, do that? Well, neither would have I, but think about the, think of like a dark and stormy, how a dark and stormy finishes like sweet. Mm. And then think about this and it finishes, it finishes like slightly whiny, slightly oaky. And I get the, the thyme and the bay leaf still from the gin. Mm. Am I making things up? Like right at the end. <laughs> and I get that really... I get gingery at the end. I, I, I get the flavor it. of ginger too, but can't I mean compared it. to... I'm not a super taster like you. You can also taste the cool fermentation flavors from the, from the mead in here, right? Mm. So uh, while we taste all these cocktails and get our heads around them, we need to say a huge thank you to the Patreons. And I think this time... Fished out my moth, sorry. Oh, Erin got a moth out. Uh, this time I'm putting it up over me so you can look at her pretty face instead of this weird beard And my moth-free drink. Yeah. But thank you so much, Patreon, for being the people that support us day in, thank you. month out. We really appreciate it. Isn't it day in, day out? Yeah, but it's turned into a thing. Now oh. I say day in, month out. Do you always do that? Yeah. <gasps> Has I've, anyone else noticed that? I haven't noticed. I didn't really I, do it on purpose. It I just kind of happened. I have not noticed. <laughs> <laughs> so this... 
Honestly, I think this is my least favorite. This one was three. flat. I haven't tried it since you added the extra sugar. The extra sugar helped. It still tastes flat to me. What do you mean flat? I don't know. It's just uh, it's just generic. I don't even know what it is. Yeah, I feel you. It's fine. It doesn't really show off the gin and it doesn't really show off the mead. Yeah. I'm less excited about this one. It's more like wine cooler with flowers and ice. I'm being serious. Yeah, it's not yeah I feel that. you. Yeah, because the, the only thing that really comes through from the ingredients is that wine flavor, right? Yeah. I gotta say, this is my favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite too. Would it be weird to add olives? <laughs> it's a martini. Yeah. I feel like I can taste the honey from the mead. I can yeah. taste the honey from the honey syrup. But it's not too, it's not yeah. too sweet at all. I can taste the, well, it's dry on purpose, right? This one's yeah. just kind of like crisp for no real reason. Yeah. This is dry. I, and I can taste everything from all of the ingredients. Yeah, so it's herby. That's what I like about it. I just mm -hmm. like drinking herb flavor though. But I can, there's like a little bit of like sweet fruity berry in it, berry ish -ish, mm. I berry? think, berry ish -ness. <laughs> Am I drunk at 12.30? I might be. I'm just glad it's 12.30. Like the real subtle oak from the meads coming through. That fermentation flavor from the meads coming through, the like um, honeycomb, not honey, flavor mm. from the meads coming through. Yeah, that's really, I don't know what, what the right word is, well balanced or something. That's delicious. Uh, <sighs> this would mess you up. Mess, this would mess you up. <laughs> you need <laughs> a nap. I do. <laughs> uh, this would mess you up real quick though, because that's mm. like a lot of booze and I would want to slam these in the sun. Yeah. Whereas this would be a little you more You just safe. have to fill the glass with olives. <laughs> and slow you down. I don't know. I think the olives would be too much for this. I think you'd lose all the fun part of it. Not the olive juice, just the olives. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Like, I think it would still be tasty. I think you would lose those, like, subtle herby and honey flavors, though. Yeah, they might ruin that. Mm. Mm. But overall, if we were, if we were to serve these to somebody, I would give them this because most people would like this. Not only some people, people are scared of like full strength yeah, martinis. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people are scared of martinis. Yeah. In general, everybody would love this. Agreed. Mm. Probably people would like this too because people like wine coolers. I, I mean, if someone was like, "Do you want a cocktail?" and they said yes, and that's as far as you question them, and you served them this, and they weren't like a cocktail person. Yeah. And they like the pretty colors. Yeah, and it's got a flower on it. <laughs> and it tastes like kind of summery. <laughs> so I think this was a giant success. Uh, and what I'd like to do is attempt to get a small sample bottle of this gin back to Garrett at Man Made the Mead so he can play with it. Uh, I also have, I mean, obviously we're going to be drinking this over the next few days now that it's open, but I have another full bottle of this that I can experiment with and a smaller bottle of a blueberry mead from Garrett. Uh, so if you guys have any suggestions on different cocktails to make, different things to pair it with or mix it with. Uh, maybe you can convince me to like blueberry. Maybe, in drinks. yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe we could fortify a mead. Mm. I don't know. You guys let us know what you'd like to see done with uh, those other two bottles. Anyway, we'll catch you next time. See you guys. I need to stop drinking these because um, we need to be productive today. I need to be productive. What are you talking about? Are we done? You were totally done. You can go. I need another sip. <laughs>